Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to talk about lists and how append can be O1, uh, but you wouldn't really think about it that way. And we're going to introduce a term called amortized, define all of that, and then explain how it works. Uh, so let's jump into it. Okay, so what am I talking about? We're talking about time complexity today. You know, big O, as as you may you may say. And this is uh, the Python wiki page for time complexity, and it goes over some of the common time complexities for various built-in types. So for instance, we have list here, and today we're gonna be talking about append. Um, and you can see here that it's average case O1 and amortized worst case O1. We'll talk about what amortized means in a second. It's actually, oh, conveniently a link to the wiki page that I already had open. Um, and you'll see, you know, there's there's other stuff here like collections deck, we have set, we have dict, the common built-in types. But let's not worry about those today. We're gonna worry about uh, vector. Or, or a list. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm looking at the tab here, which is uh, the C++ equivalent class, which is vector. And vector also says this same thing. Insertion or removal of elements at the end is amortized constant O1. Although I think they're actually using not O, but the other, what is it? Omega? No. This is maybe just a fancy looking O. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, uh, but it is amortized O1. And so what does amortized mean here? Uh, and amortized analysis, I'll, I'll, I'll skip the blurb here. Uh, basically, the idea behind an amortized analysis is some operations may take significantly more time than others, but the time complexity is going to consider the either average case or sort of best case there. Uh, and actually, when, when this says amortized worst case, they're not being... <laughs> We're not being exactly, yeah, if for amortized worst case, this should say O-N, um, but you know, amortized, the amortized uh, append here should be O-1. And let's explain how that works. And to do that, I'm gonna, uh, we're gonna enter our MS Paint mode. We haven't done this in a while, so this is a nice little MS Paint video. And let's visualize how a list works. Now, typically what a list will have is, it'll be a little object here, and it will have a, uh, this is going to be a little bit of C here. Uh, let's say this is a, and of course this is, <laughs> we're not really in Python land here. We're going we're to talk in C++ land since it makes a little bit more sense. Uh, so let's say we're talking about a vector of ints here. This is basically the same as a list of ints in Python. Uh, and if you had a list in Python, this is sort of like a vector of, uh, of pi object star where pi object star is any sort of Python type. Uh, but let's, let's say that we're talking about a vector of ints here. Uh, the vector will contain a data part, which is going to be a int pointer, uh, basically an array of integers. And this is going to point to some heap memory. So let's say we have a box here, and we can imagine this as being our pointer here. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. I want my squiggly line. There we go, squiggly line. So this is our int pointer, uh, and it points at this chunk of memory here. And this chunk of memory is going to have a bunch of boxes. Each of these can be some number of integers. And the vector is also going to have two other pieces of data. One of them is going to be capacity, which is going to be an int, and the other is going to be either length or size. I don't remember the exact name. Uh, well, and these will probably actually be size t, which is an integer type. Um, but, or, or S, S size, no, no, normal size T, unsized, unsigned, uh, unsigned size. But we can just say int for today. Um, yeah, I know, it's, if we're being pedantic, it should be a, uh, a size T. But we'll just say int for today. It's gonna, I'm oversimplifying it a little bit. So let's say in this case that this particular vector has, uh, you know, three values in it. Uh, and so right now this vector will have capacity five and size three, and this data pointer will point at this chunk of memory here. Uh, if we were to run an append operation on this, so let's say we ran append uh, the value six, and that will take uh, this and it will put a six in here. So let's color that some other thing so that we have something to show what the new operation here is. And since the vector already had space to add this six, it was just a simple assignment into this memory cell. Now, if we were to run append seven, 
say, oops, ding, <laughs> little windows ding there. Append seven. I think it's actually push in vector land, but you know, we're being a little bit wishy-washy on our terminology here. You'll see that append seven also, uh, you know, didn't have to do any extra work. It was just a simple O1 assignment here. So this happened in O1, and this happened in O1. But now our capacity is the same as our size. So now we've we've updated size to four here. And this one updated size to five, and capacity is the same size. So we, this is a full vector. Now, if I were to run append again, say that we appended an eight here, what the vector actually has to do is a bunch of additional work. Uh, in the general case, it has to reallocate this entire array, copy everything over to the new array, and then append the value. And that'll be kind of our worst case scenario, which is going to be O n. It has to do a whole bunch of work here. So we're actually going to throw away this original uh, data pointer you know, chunk of memory, this array of memory, and we actually have to build a brand new one here. So we have to uh, build, build a new array here. And typically what vectors will do is they will have a growth factor. Uh, typically what they do is they multiply in size as you add values to them. So uh, it's probably better to just copy paste this and to demonstrate our growth factor here. <laughs> Dang it, I didn't give myself enough space. Okay, we'll just do it down here. That'll be a little bit sloppy. Uh, but typically how, how vectors will do this is they will double their size. Now that would be a growth factor of two in this case, where we, we get uh, a doubled size here. Let me clean this up a little bit just so it looks less Less gross. I mean, it's a little bit jank because it's going to be our, our MS Paint drawing here. Uh, so it'll it'll allocate a new vector or a new array. It will reassign this pointer here. So let's say that we are now reassigning down here, and then it'll perform our append here. And so it has to do a bunch of different uh, a bunch of extra work. And this is kind of where that amortized cost happens. So this this actually happened in O n, and it set size to six, and now our capacity is ten because we have uh, doubled our size of our array. We have we have grown grown our vector, um, and that's kind of that's kind of how this works. Uh, but then if we were to do another append, you would see you know it would add into these in O one, and you know, when it reached capacity again, then it would double in size again. I don't know, it might even triple in size, depending on how your, your growth factor of your vector works. Uh, but this is kind of that, that amortized part. So normal operations, O1. Worst case, we're going to get this ON. And overall, we tend to report a append to a vector as O1. Uh, you can imagine a similar situation for removing something from the end. So like, say we did a pop operation, and we've removed this element here. This is very easy. It is just uh, reassigning size to one value smaller. Uh, you may clear the value, but you probably don't really need to. Um, and so it's a, it's a very simple operation. And some vectors, if you delete enough elements, they may shrink the buffer. You don't have to. Like, you could hold on to that extra memory. You know, maybe it'll grow to a larger size later. Uh, but, you know, you don't, you don't need to. Uh, and so that's where the uh, 01 comes from. Anyway, I get asked this a lot, and I figured I would walk you through how I think about this in my head. Uh, this is basically the same way as you know, array list works in Java, or list in Python, or vector in, in C++, or vec in Rust, or you know, any, any various uh, variable length you know, heap allocated container type. But anyway, hopefully you found this interesting. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.